Probably Joe, I'd say. Mm. Probably Joe Grant. Um, I'm trying to think. Mind, there's a couple of Welsh actors. There's a couple of Welsh boys. Um, do you think I can remember their names now? I don't know. One, one his, his nickname is Osht. Everybody calls him Osht. Richard Ostley, I think, is he. And he's, um, he lives in Cardiff. But he's from Ammonford Way. Um, him. And did anybody watch Broad? What was it called? Broad Church? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I used to watch that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, he was in the first series and he was the one that did it. Mm. Da, da, da. <laughs> you know, oh. he was the one who was supposed to have murdered the little boy. I didn't quite believe that story. I didn't did. believe it. Did you not? That. No, I no, didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't think it was credible. But no. him, he's a lovely bloke, Matthew Gravel, and a lovely actor. And years ago, we were doing a. TV series set in Wales and it was like um, a wedding, somebody's wedding. So of course you're there all day long, sat around the table and the food gets less and less and less because you're picking at it because you're bored. And those two boys, they really made me laugh. Hell. Hell. Oh. <laughs> He's the most disgusting, <laughs> smelly, Foul mouth. No, he was absolutely. <laughs> 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 He's a really lovely, a really lovely man. Yeah. yeah, you know, quite ordinary, really. No, oh. I know. It was a missed opportunity, wasn't it? Yeah. I know. They didn't write it for my. Uh, my harder. stories and my episodes that I was in, it was the TARDIS. Oh, Other people were in it. I was a bit gutted. Yeah. yeah, I would have liked to have gone in the TARDIS. Yeah, I wish there was a scene with uh, Miss Moore went into the TARDIS and she, she was shocked. It was like actually big in on the inside. <laughs> shot. Shocked. No, oh, shocked. shocked. Oh, shocked. <laughs> yes, I was going to say, oh no, don't shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say shock. <laughs> <laughs> shocked. shocked. Yeah. Absolutely, because it's so much bigger on the inside. Yeah. yeah. And she could start talking about changing the decoration, couldn't she? Yeah. Yeah. You could have a nice wallpaper there. I think that pink, you know, all that sort of thing. No, I didn't. No. no. It didn't occur to me to. And to be honest, I think they'd have been very sweaty. Yeah. Mm. Inside, it might have been a bit unpleasant. Yeah. Because they used to moan and groan, those Cybermen, about yeah. how uncomfortable everything was. Yeah. And the minute they finished filming, then the director said, cut off the helmet, we can. Yeah. I think it was quite... Yeah. It didn't occur to me to try one up. You would have, would you? Yeah, I would. Yeah. 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 Yes, um, I think I have. I did a film called The Reverend, but I don't know what ever became of it. I don't think it got like, you know, when they say general release, that means like it goes in the pictures mm. in the cinemas, so I don't think it ever went in the cinemas. And it was a company I'd worked for on something else. They made a film about a boxer, and I played his mum, and that was really good. Mm. And then they made this film called The Reverend, and I think it was meant to be a horror film, but I'm ashamed to say it. I didn't read the whole script. <laughs> no, this is letting you into some of the secrets of actors. I only had a few scenes in it. If, you, if I'd had a big part in it, yeah. of course I would have read the whole script. Yeah. To have got the sense of it. Because of but I only had a small part and I was really busy doing something else at the same time. So I just read my scenes and I learned them, you know. Remember them. Oh yeah, that's right. And I thought, oh, I'm sure it'll be alright. It does seem to be alright. Read the script all the way through. <laughs> <laughs> I, if it's a big part, I should read it all the way through, even if it's a small part. Yeah. It's a terrible admission. Yeah. But other actors would admit to it, I think. Um, how do I prepare for a role? Um, if I do it properly, and over the years, I have to admit, I haven't always done it properly. I've been mm -hmm. quite lazy. I don't mm. know why I've been lazy about something I care about so much, but sometimes I have. But... Anyway, um, if I'm doing it properly, 
I do a sort of biography of the character. So I read it through <coughs> the script a few times and I read what she <coughs> says, the character, and then I read about what other people say about her, because you can get clues from that as well. Um, and then I'll do a little, I just, you know, on some blank sheets of paper, I'll kind of make some notes, a few pages of very roughly, you know, where she was born, where she went to school, what her childhood was like. I just make it up because obviously it's not yeah. in there. But it really helps me. Yeah. And then when I come to do it, <laughs> I feel like I know the character much better. So mm. like, you know, what relationship she's had, because if it's a character that's older, you know, has she had children? Mm. What upsets has she had in her life? What difficulties? Mm. Mm. How she feels about this or that, you mm. know, what her views mm -hmm. are. There's loads of stuff you can do. Mm -hmm. So I do tend to do that. And the other thing I have learned to do is to learn the lines. No, this is a tip for you. You're all actors now, are you? Mm -hmm. today. <laughs> yep, we are, yeah. Mm -hmm. Learn the lines as if they're written inside your skull. Learn the lines so thoroughly that you don't even have to think what's my next line. You just instinctively know. And that means working really, really, really hard and it's boring. <laughs> and people say, how do you learn the lines? And I say like this. That's like, you know what I mean? There's no, yeah. there's no great magic to it. No, no. You're just going no. down the page and seeing if you can remember your line. And yeah. But the other thing is to remember the cue, which is as important as your line. Because if the person before you doesn't get their cue right, doesn't get their line right, then you're going to be floundering a bit about what you should say. But if you know exactly what the person who speaks before you, what that character is going to say, then that really is helpful. Bored. Broad. Oh, broad. I was going to say bored. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, some of these questions is quite interesting. I began to realise when I had a quick look at them. You say filming, but I would include in that with theatre jobs. Mm -hmm. Is that all right? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. you're mainly filming, but as an actor, loads of my work is is theatre as well, especially when I started out. So yes, years ago. I did a play called An Evening with Gary Lineker, which is a comedy about football. It was a really funny play. And uh, the company took us to the Middle East. It was brilliant. We went to Jordan. We went to Oman. And stayed in. What it was, right, it was for English people living abroad who've got loads of money. Expats. So they would pay a fortune to come to the hotel have a lovely dinner, and then we would do the play for them. So we stayed in these fantastic hotels as well. Oh, they were brilliant. So in Oman, we stayed in this hotel. It was right on the Indian Ocean, and we could swim there every day. And in Jordan, we went to um, a place called Petra, which is one of the great wonders of the world. Um, where else did we go? Um, two other places. Jordan, Oman. Abu Dhabi, I think. can't remember the last one. It was a long time ago. And, yeah, it was a real privilege because, you know, to work and um, to be paid for being abroad in lovely hotels is... That was one of my favourite jobs. Mm -hmm. That was quite hard for me when I, when I thought about it. And I thought two things, really. Well, one is that... Um, I was in a theatre production years and years and years ago in Stratford East in London of Midsummer Night's Dream and I played a character called Hippolyta and the company hired all the costumes from the Royal Shakespeare Company and when mine came the label was still sewed in from whoever had worn it in the Royal Shakespeare Company and it said Helen Mirren, Lady Macbeth. I don't know if any of you know Helen Mirren. She's a very famous um, English actress now. And I had seen her as a schoolgirl, actually in that production of Lady Macbeth. I'd, and I thought, oh my God, she's brilliant, she's brilliant. So to have the costume that she'd worn was amazing, actually. It was really good. Mm. 
but more fun costumes. I played Cruella de Vil in a theatre production of um, Countryman Dalmatians in the Sherman Theatre in Cardiff years ago now. They're one of their Christmas shows. And I had the most brilliant costumes from Cruella de Vil. Completely off the top. Red stilettos with about 10 inch heels and, you know, loads of flamboyant, brightly coloured things. Yeah, that was fun. Do you know, I was a little bit, in the way, I wasn't scared of them when we weren't film men, obviously, because I, you know, I would chat to them, they'd have their helmets off and all that, but when we did the scene where they were chasing us down the, the, um, the corridor underground, and we had to get to that ladder, that vertical ladder, and get up that vertical ladder, which was quite hard to climb, I thought my heart was pounding like that. It felt really scary. Yeah. Did he have the heart attack? I nearly did have a heart attack, Lennon. <laughs> <laughs> I nearly did have a heart attack. That <laughs> 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 would have been no good. No good. No good. <laughs> Call an ambulance. Oh, God. Recast. <laughs> <laughs>